Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today I just want to try something that I heard about. I never actually used this technique, but I just want to see how it works. I saw someone make some hats and clothes and doll things with paper, so I just wanted to see how it worked out. So this is just some of that regular brown paper towel that you get, it's kind of industrial type paper towel and I'm actually mod podging both sides of it then I allowed it to dry now dolls after it dried it had that same leathery texture that regular brown paper bag has and because I layered it like in two layers it was pretty pretty firm so it was pretty sturdy feeling and so I went on to make the crown of some hats the same way I had made hats in a previous video for the dress shop except I didn't use fabric. I just used a little Mod Podge and some tacky glue to glue up the seams. Now I did go on to employ a couple of tried and true hat making methods, which you shape the fabric or the paper or whatever you're using over the top of a lid, rubber band it down, and then I added my Mod Podge. Now in this instance, the Mod Podge worked really great, but I am clear that my water and glue solution would have worked just as well. So if you don't have Mod Podge, you definitely can use PVA glue and water. And I did several little lids because I really wanted to play around with this and experiment. So this definitely fell into the category of me making more than I need. Now my true inspiration for making these additional little paper hats is because I have some additional guests coming to the rooming house for the wedding and they need hats. Years ago, ladies didn't go out in public without beautiful hats on. So I wanted to make sure everybody had what they needed for the occasion. I was really tickled about how nice and firm these hat crowns were. Now here's a piece of the paper that I laid out flat and I used my a circle template to cut my circles or to shape my circles so that they would be as round as possible. And after using the circle template for the brim of the hat, I actually used it again to cut the opening so that it would match the opening to my crown. Now dolls, you can definitely be very specific and really, really precise about cutting your circles or finding the center. I didn't dolls. I eyeballed it and went ahead and found the center and pierced the circle so that I can make the opening to the hat. Now, dolls, it really helps me to make my circle as circular as possible by kind of cutting it like a pie, and then I can do small portions at a time. And after I got it opened, I put my crown on, and I used an ample amount of the tacky glue. Now, it wasn't being excessive, dolls, and it's not going to show on the brown paper after it dries anyway. And I really wasn't worried about getting extra glue around the outside because I'm going to decorate that with flowers and ribbons anyway. Now, after I got everything glued all up, I was really tickled by the way they looked. I was excited to see how they looked dry. And when they were dry, they were really sturdy. They were very firm. I didn't feel like I was handling paper. So I was really excited about decorating them and really bringing them to life so that they would be wedding appropriate for some of the additional dolls. Now, I felt like I needed to try some of the hats on for size to make sure that I was staying in scale. And I was very pleased that these hats were fitting his head very nicely. Now, his head is a little bit bigger than one of my ladies' heads, but he has hair on. So to me, that gave a really accurate depiction of how it would fit. Now, it seemed a little bit big on her, but you have to keep in mind, she doesn't have her hairstyle on. So by the time I add her hairstyle it will sit really nice i think it'll look really pretty and very stately on her so i'm really excited about dressing these dolls and i did also do a couple cylinder type crowns for a couple men's hats now in the midst of the hat making i did want to try another concept i had this beautiful piece of fabric one of my dear friends sent me and it had a butterfly on it a beautiful blue butterfly and this was the perfect opportunity to use this beautiful fabric with this technique so i wanted to see how it would work with fabric so using the paper as the template and i used the mod podge as my adhesive and allowed that to dry now dolls this video originally started out for making hats for the dolls for the wedding but in the midst of making the hats, I felt like I needed to make a few hat boxes. Now, you know, I made quite a few during the making of the dress shop or preparing for the dress shop. 
but with all these hats i feel like some of these need to be in boxes as well and i use a technique that's similar to what i used when i made the hat boxes for the dress shop but i did do a few things a little bit differently i tried to be a little bit more um precise by using my circular template so that my hat boxes will actually be rounder now while some of my pieces were drying i just wanted to show you this little hat box that i made when i was a little girl i made it with some tissue paper and some tape and card and almost a paper mache type technique it never occurred to me to size the hat box so that the hat would actually fit inside it really amuses me when i look at all the tiny balled up pieces of paper that i was using as my flowers for my hat I love that it reminds me that if I keep working, I will get better. Now that the beginning cylinders of some of the hat boxes are dry, I just wanted to size them up and make sure some of the hats actually did fit inside. <laughs> now, dolls, when you're making the lid for your hat boxes, you want to size your paper around the outside of your box. And, dolls, I could have measured and then everything would have been all precise. The only thing I really did was use my ruler to kind of help me make the edge of the lids straight. Now, something I did differently than I did in my original hat box is I used a small piece of paper inside the joint so that my edges or the seams of my hat boxes and the lids didn't, um, they didn't have to overlap. I added a teeny piece of paper with glue on the inside seam so that they would butt up against each other, again, to avoid overlapping the seams. Now that I felt like the perimeter of the cylinder for the hat boxes and the lids were ready, it was time for me to make the tops and the bottom. And I did use my circle template to help give me a little bit more uniformity. <laughs> I really want to encourage you dolls to use your tools so that you can have the best outcome possible. Although I do do a lot of eyeballing, I do recognize that certain tools for measuring and helping things be more uniform really does help you get a better result. Now, this doesn't mean I'm going to stop eyeballing, but I do see the value of the tools. So while a couple of those hat boxes were drying, I went back to working on the fabric hat. After I cut the excess paper off, I began to fold over a small hem around the edge of the top of the brim. And I did cut little snips in the fabric so that it would go around the edge really neatly and lay down really nicely. Now, after I had completely covered up the edge of the paper with the fabric, I flipped it over and found the center with my eyeball and pierced the fabric. And after I pierced it, I did the same technique of kind of cutting it into triangle or pie shaped pieces before I folded over or cut out the fabric. Now with the paper hats, I cut the circle out, but because I'm using fabric and trying to cover the paper, I cut it into triangles and then added Mod Podge around the perimeter of where I actually cut the little snips. And then I folded it in on top of the paper so there would be a nice clean finish from the outside. Now that that's done, let's look at the crown. Now I made the crown the exact same way that I made the paper crowns, but I just did it with the piece of fabric. And I really love that this fabric has a sort of a metallic element in the design. I think it looks really, really interesting. I can't wait to add all my little extras to it. Now I did the same thing to this hat. I just added the glue to the crown and placed it down on the brim that I had just completed with the fabric and allowed it to dry. I think that looks really cute. Now I went back to the hat boxes now that the hats were actually drying and I just used a little tacky glue to add a little lace and ribbon and lace and more ribbon and more lace. <laughs> And after I added as much fabric lace as I could, I found some paper lace that I had been given. And I thought that might look kind of interesting on a hat box. So I added a little Mod Podge. I centered the lace on the lid, smushed it down around the sides, and then added more Mod Podge. Now that I got that out of my system, I went back to my original project, which is decorating the little brown paper hat. I had quite a few little dried flowers and ribbon and lace and things, and I really felt like I just wanted to try everything. Now, dolls, I really didn't have a serious plan. I was literally just playing, 
And that's why I made so many of the little hats so that I could just play and try and try until I came up with some looks that I was happy with. Now, these were some tiny dried out little pieces of baby breath. They were actually from some old floral arrangements. And I thought they were really pretty. And since I didn't have to make a bouquet for Marguerite, I had them to spare. <laughs> if anyone hasn't seen the video, when I shared the beautiful bouquet made for Marguerite by my friend Kat over at Midvale Minis, I will leave a link in the description for that video. I must admit, dolls, I'm really having a good time. I'm just playing around here. And I couldn't seem to throw these little crushed up leftovers away. I thought they would come in handy for something later on. Maybe some dollhouse potpourri. <laughs> I just couldn't seem to throw it away. So here I am back playing around with some more paper, trying to make more hat boxes. Now I'm actually using some scraps of old wallpaper. The really nice type that's a little bit firm. It stands up really well. And with these lids, I kind of went back into my old ways. Instead of using the circle templates, I just glued paper on top and cut the paper from around the rim. It's not a bad way, but using the circle template is a better way. Now, I am using my Podge on the inside of some of the lids and adding additional wallpaper, one, to make the lids firmer and to make them look a little bit more decorative rather than so plain. And as I know, it's probably at this point, the video is starting to seem sort of like a Pulp Fiction type of thing where I'm going from one thing to another. But I just allowed it to play the way things were going in my mind. Sometimes my ideas aren't sequential. They come to me at random and I'll be working on one item and then I'll work on another item. And it was just kind of challenging trying to stop and break my concentration and flow of creativity to keep the video orderly. This time I just thought I would go ahead and allow the video to play so you could really see how it really happens when I'm creating. So I hope you don't mind. So at this point I was adding little bits and scraps of ribbons, lace, and flowers. And I literally just went from one hat to another just trying different concepts, imagining different dolls and their personalities, where they're going, how they might dress, their different styles, and how the different types of hat and styles of hat fit different dolls and different lifestyles or characters. And I realized after a while that I had made quite a few of my hats kind of fancy, which is kind of a tendency of mine with certain things. But then I thought, well, what about if a doll needed kind of a more simple hat, a more basic hat? Maybe it was a doll who wasn't from the city. Maybe they lived a more um, country life or a more simple life. They might want a hat that kind of looks like straw. So I took a little bit of my burlap and did the same thing that I had done to the brown paper bag and fitted it around the lids of a couple small bottles or small containers so that it'd be about the size of my doll's heads. And I did take one of the crowns of the hat and decided not to even put a rim on it. I added some lace and a little flower to the side and I thought that would look cute for maybe an older lady who wanted something simpler. She didn't want a wide brim or anything too fancy and flamboyant just a simple flower now dolls after making a little rimless hat i used the other burlap crowns and added a regular brim around each of those using the same concept basically that i did for the paper and for the fabric hat now you will have to allow it to dry and again no worries about a little extra glue the tacky glue is going to dry absolutely clear so you won't notice any of that when it's dry. So I had a couple of different ideas for styling. So I did two burlap hats. Now these burlap ones were actually made out of that wired ribbon burlap. So I didn't use the circle template at all. I just eyeballed it and cut the circles and then cut the centers out to create these hats. So dolls, I want this video to encourage you to experiment. Don't get too set in doing any one thing one particular way. Try something different. You'll be surprised what you might discover because everything that is at one point was just somebody's idea in their imagination. I really appreciate you dolls coming here and watching and allowing me to share. 
having you here really makes all the difference well i really need to stop playing with these hats and go ahead and get myself together and finish up the work that i need to do to prepare for marguerite and Sadi's wedding looks like i need to create an entire trousseau for marguerite <laughs> so dolls i know i kind of went off the rails and really didn't stay on topic and i'll really try hard next time to be more sequential now dolls if you enjoyed this video today definitely let me know in the comments and if you want to see more content like this if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe and always look for me on mondays and wednesdays after 7 30 p.m eastern standard time and make sure you hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted when i upload a new video dolls it sure has been a lot of fun creating this video for you today i truly hope you enjoyed yourself because I did. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.